Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, I'm Anju Kagar and today I'm going to be telling you about Border Teller. Now if you remember, we had spoken about upper respiratory tract infections and lower rep respiratory tract infections. Today we are going to talk about an organism which is known to cause tracheitis and produce a disease called whooping cough. The objectives of this lecture would, to tell, would be to tell you about the organism the clinical presentation and complications of the diseases caused by this organism, its pathogenicity, laboratory diagnosis, treatment and preventive measures. Bordetella was an organism which was discovered by Bordet and Gengu way back in 1900 and it has three species all of which cause whooping cough. Bordetella pertussis, Bordetella parapertussis and Bordetella bronchiseptica. Amongst these bronchiseptica is more known for causing pneumonia rather than whooping cough. So let us look at a case study to understand what Bordetella pertussis can cause. Nupur, a 3 year old was brought to the hospital with excessive, excessive bouts of coughing. The mother explained that she would go red in the face and vomit after her coughing bout. On further questioning, she stated that her child had a runny nose with fever and tearing, which after 5 days developed into a persistent cough. Often with these paroxysmal spells of intense coughing. The doctor noticed that these were followed by a loud inspiratory whoop. Because of this, he suspected that she was suffering from whooping cough. On further questioning, he elicited a history of her 12 year old elder sibling having a persi persistent cough a few days back along with many other children who were affected in her school. He also realized that Nupur had missed completing her immunization schedule of DPT at 4 and 5 months as the parents had migrated to another place where primary health uh, facilities were unavailable. On examination, she had a mild fever, her eyes were red with a watery discharge, conjunctival hemorrhages were visible, she was dehydrated and a characteristic ins inspiratory whoop was also noted when she coughed. Auscultation of the chest was unremarkable and the chest radiograph showed perihilar infiltrates. Her WBC count was raised and there was marked lymphocytosis. So how are we going to confirm the diagnosis of whooping cough? Treatment is very important to prevent complications and to prevent the spread of the disease to other children. Therefore, it is advisable to start the treatment early. However, collection of sample for culture should be done before the antimicrobials are started. What are the samples we would collect? We could collect a nasopharyngeal swab and as you know, as the picture depicts, you need to use a swab which has a long which, uh, which has a long arm and is flexible because you have to actually go back to the nasopharynx to collect it. Now these swabs should be made of either calcium alginate, dacron but never cotton because con cotton inhibits the growth of bordetella. A nasopharyngeal aspirate would give you a higher chance of isolation and the third method 
is to give the patient a cough plate which is bordered gengo medium or ragan lawi medium which on which the patient coughs directly. So, the cough plate is held at a distance of 12 to 18 inches in front of the child when he is coughing. Once we receive the sample, a smear of the, na the nasopharyngeal swab which was stained by Graham's method showed small gram negative coca coco bacilli which were non-motile, non-sporing, capsulated, bipolar metachromatic granules were obse observed with special stains. The next rapid test which we could do was the direct immunofluorescence test which was positive and a polymerase chain reaction demonstrated the presence of DNA to Bordetella. Culture the cough plates were incubated at 35 to 37 degrees for 72 hours and on the bordered gengu glycerine potato blood agar, mercury drop or bisected pearl appearance colonies were seen as can be seen in this picture. A smear from the culture showed gram negative cocoa bacilli with the th thumb print appearance. So, let us look at the disease. It is also called pertussis. Outbreaks were first described way back in the 16th century and this was a major cause of childhood deaths prior to vaccination. The mode of transmission is by droplet infection. It is highly, uh, highly contagious. Humans are the only hosts. And the patient is infectious from day 3 of the runny nose to 3 weeks into the illness. If antibiotics are started, then the patient becomes non-infectious within 5 days. So, if we look at 0 as the uh, onset of cough, so this, this is a timeline in weeks. The infectious period is about 10 days before the onset of cough till about 3 weeks. Then this 10 days before the cough till the onset of cough is called the catarrhal stage where the ch child will have a cold or flu like symptoms. From 0 week to 6 weeks it is the paroxysmal stage where there will be bouts of cough with prolonged inspiratory whoop at the end of the cough. There will be no fever or very mild fever. From 6 weeks to 12 weeks, we have the convalescent phase where there is a de decrease in the frequency of the coughing spells. Now, it is this paroxysmal stage which is very important because this is the stage where you get complications. Besides the subconjunctival hemorrhages, you can get otitis media, convulsions or encephalopathy. The organism does not penetrate the epithelium. So, the pathogenesis of the disease is a as a result of adhesins and toxins. The adhesins consist of the filamentous hemagglutinin, fimbriae and pertactin and toxins are the pertussis toxin, the tracheal cytotoxin and the adenyl cyclase toxin. Coming to the adhesins, I have already enumerated them. They stick to the ciliated epithelial cells of the respiratory tract and persist for a long period and allow the organism to persist for a long period of time. If the organisms are ingested by macrophages, they resist digestion. The toxins, let us start with the pertussis toxin. Like with most of the other toxins that you have learnt about, the toxin consists of two fragments, the enzymatically active A fragment and the B fragment which is responsible for binding. What are the effects of the pertussis toxin? First of all, it stimulates multiplication of lymphocytes. 
It also causes activation of the pancreatic islet cells and delay, delays the recruitment of neutrophils to the respiratory tract. The tracheal cytotoxin destroys the cilia and finally the epithelial cells. So, here the cilia are being destroyed and then the epithelial cells die. There is local mucosal damage leading to paroxysmal cough. Adenyl cyclase toxin inhibits the migration of phagocytes to the respiratory tract and it also prevents the activation of macrophages. Treatment of uh, whooping cough is by giving erythromycin or other macrolides, especially if it is given early in the catarrhal stage, then it reduces the infectious phase to 5 days. Immunoprophylaxis is very important and in the past it was the classic vaccine which was a whole cell killed Bordetella pertussis alum absorbed DPT vaccine which was given uh, at an interval of 4 to 6 weeks before the age of 6 months and a booster was given at the end of the first year of life. Now, this vaccine has been replaced by the acellular vaccine and therefore, it is now called the DTAP. The acellular vaccine consists of bacterial components which are the pertussis toxin, the filamentous hemagglutinin, fimbriae and a 69, 69 kilodalton membrane protein. This has lesser side effects and therefore, people are more prone to taking the vaccination, more prone to giving the children the, the vaccination because side effects are less. But one must realize that the immunity wanes with age and therefore, we find that older children are now getting infected by Bordetella pertussis just like Nupur's elder sibling did. Of course, in her case some amount of immunity must have been there and that is why she did not land up with a severe attack of whooping cough. However, the organism persisted in her throat and that is how she gave it to her unimmunized sibling. To summarize, Bordetella pertussis is a gram negative cocobacilli which causes whooping cough, a highly infectious disease which is characterized by a flu like illness, a persistent cough which occurs in paroxysms with a characteristic classic inspiratory whoop and ends with vomiting and most of the times when they vomit you will find that they bring out mucus plugs. It needs to be treated immediately so as to prevent complications. The organism does not invade the body, hence fever is not a characteristic feature. Pathogenesis is as a result of the adhesions and toxins, WBC counts are raised and lymphocytosis is a characteristic feature of Bordetella pertussis infection. For laboratory diagnosis, you can collect a nasopharyngeal swab or an aspirate or directly on a cough plate. Gram stain and direct fluorescent antibody tests can be performed as well as PCR which will give you results in one day. Culture on bordet gengu medium will show you bisected pearl or mercury drop colonies. Treatment is with macrolides. The vaccination is DTAP which is given before 6 months of age in 3 doses at 4 to 6 week intervals. Immunity wanes with age and hence we see a resurgence of cases. Thank you.